Hi guys. In this video we're going to have a look at this old Remington rolling block. Now this originally started out life as a black powder cartridge rifle and at some point in time in its uh, history it was converted into a 20 gauge shotgun. Now this could have been converted by the Bannerman Company of New York. It's quite likely considering the uh, vintage of the gun and the gun might have started out as a 5070. It might very well have been a New York State Militia gun, but I'm not entirely sure of that. As you can see, there's virtually no finish remaining on these guns. A lot of them actually were issued or shipped from the factory in the white, so there may never have been much uh, finish on this at all. And if it did have any finish, it was most likely browned and not blued. It has about a 31 inch barrel, roughly. The, uh, the original rifle barrel was removed, bored out to 20 gauge shotgun shell, shell size and reinstalled. This one has a 2 and 3 quarter inch chamber. Interestingly enough with the foreign wood removed, the evidence is still under there of a, a rear sight dovetail that the gun would have had when it was a rifle. They apparently shortened the, uh, the breech up by about half a turn so that they could hide the uh, the rifle sight dovetail underneath the forend. It has the, uh, the patent information here on the tang, but is basically otherwise unmarked. A little bit of a sighting rib through it there. Sort of the basic construction of the rifle on that side. We'll turn it over and have a look at the uh, left hand side. And the left hand side has the, the keeper plate which holds the two uh, pivots in place. The breech block and the hammer run on those two pivots and this keeper plate holds them in, into the gun. Someone's been at this thing with a screwdriver that didn't fit very well but considering how old this is that's not really surprised it would have suffered a little bit of uh, abuse over the years. And there's the uh, the butt plate. Kind of a curved style of butt plate. And the forend is held on with uh, a single screw. And there's a little block that's been attached to the barrel that that screw attaches to. And we've got a very simple bead sight up front. So a very simple and robust style of uh, action, the rolling block. And I've been shooting this one today for, uh, shot a couple of rounds of skeet with it actually. Of course you can't shoot doubles with a single shot shotgun, but I think I shot uh, 19 targets the first time and the second time out I shot uh, I think 22 out of 25. So not too bad altogether for something that certainly was never intended to be used for skeet shooting. But I do plan on taking this uh, upland game hunting this fall if I get a chance to. Maybe uh, shoot a grouse or two with it with any luck. And the barrel is uh, non-choked so it's just a basically a straight tube all the way through with no choke constriction. It's generally agreed upon that these guns are safe to use with lead loaded smokeless powder shotgun shells at least in 20 gauge because there's actually there's still quite a bit of material left at the breech. They haven't been hogged out too much. Some of these were made in 28 gauge which would be once again safe to use with modern shells because there's lots of material. Uh, the 16 gauge guns are a little bit on the thin side. They're they're bored out a little more. I don't know if what the general consensus is as to their uh, suitability with modern shells but 20 gauge factory or reloads that are loaded to factory specs have a pressure level which is similar to the original 5070 type loads so uh, it is generally considered that these are okay for some use with smokeless powder shells and I haven't seen any uh, difficulties with mine yet although I haven't shot it a great deal. Anyway let's go fire a few shells with this thing at some clay targets and see what we can do. Alright let's try a couple of hand thrown targets here with some reloads.
to load the Remington rolling block, simply cock the hammer back, pull back the breech, insert a shell, close the breech back up, and the gun is now ready to fire. If you wanted to carry this around, say, uh, upland game hunting, and you want it to be in a safer condition, put your thumb on the hammer, pull the trigger, and ease the hammer forward until it's intercepted by the half cock notch. And in that position, the hammer is not sitting on top of the firing pin. Now, if I was to ease the hammer all the way forward till it's on top of the firing pin, which would be that position there, that's a dangerous position because any blow to the hammer could discharge or would discharge the round that's in the chamber. So there's the half cock notch and that's sort of the safety position for this type of action. So from there on in, we'll just cock it back. Fire it to unload. Cock the hammer, pull back on the breech and the extractor, which is right down here, will pull the cartridge case out from the chamber. This particular gun has a bit of a firing pin issue. It's actually punching holes through the primers. That's, that needs to be corrected before it gets used too much more. But you can see the, uh, the extractor right there. Here's a pattern uh, fired at about 25 yards from this gun and it makes it very clear that it has no uh, choking at all because the pattern basically runs the entire size of this cardboard pretty well. There's a little bit of a, some of the corners don't have some shot on them, but there are pellets over almost the entire, the entire uh, piece of cardboard. That's about a uh, three foot square piece of cardboard and it's almost completely covered with pellets. So this is basically a cylinder bore, which is actually quite fine with me because I like an open bore gun for upland game use. If you were to shoot a, uh, a grouse or something with this, you wouldn't get it overly mutilated by being hit with too many pellets. It gives you a nice big pattern. So that's okay with me, but it's not something you'd want to use at any kind of a distance.